Ladies and gentlemen, Scoop and EB, James and EB, some, I, I get to change my name. I got my, my official <laughs> government name in there. But uh, look, another edition of Unscripted. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we are here. It's Saturday morning. Thank you all for joining and, 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 and tuning in. EB, how you living today, brother? Not too bad, not too bad. Did a little beach walk, and uh, yeah, it was nice. Okay. Well, uh, you know, my, my gym has finally opened. So I was there at 7 o'clock this morning, got a little something in. Uh, I may go back today, try to do some two a days. It's, you know, I'm, I'm an old man now. I can't, I can't just, I can't just go out there and do it like, like we used to. But I, I am glad that we are starting to get back to some bits of normalcy. Got to keep moving. Uh, got to keep moving. Look, today is going to be a good show. We got, we got some folks in the green room. Let me tell you something. We got, <laughs> we, we, we got, we got some old school in, in, in the green room. We, we, we wanted to do a conversation with people who have. Um, not just lived in the uh, contiguous 48 or, or the 50 U.S. states, but have actually lived abroad, wherever that may be, Germany, Italy, Japan, uh, either for whatever reason, military family, or, or just had that fortunate, uh, that fortune of having stamps in their passport. And uh, we pulled together some folks. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that, man? I think so. Yeah, I like the list of people I haven't seen in a minute. Yeah. So we 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 gonna go ahead and and I'm gonna shut up and I'm I'm gonna let Ev just run this because I'm just gonna sit back and just enjoy <laughs> the fact that we got some of these winners here on. Uh, as we bring folks on screen, I would love for everyone to just say uh, who they are and where they're dialing in from. Uh, we gonna we gonna go we gonna go ladies first and and I'm, I'm gonna make sure I don't get in trouble. I'm, I'm gonna go with Sister Norma Richardson. Oh, oh she over there messing with her camera and. <laughs> Yeah. So, 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 Norma, what, 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 how you living? You all right? Oh, she done put us back on mute. Oh, Lord, she don't know how to use this technology. You be talking <laughs> on mute, but <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Come on now. All is well. There it is. Oh, there she go. It's wonderful to have a granddaughter here that shows you how to use this modern right? technology. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, how you figure this, oh, this N and WWW. No. <laughs> no. It's all right. Roz Evans. Talk to us. Hi, I'm Roz <laughs> Evans, and I'm in Abilene, Texas. Hot Abilene, Texas. It's been over 100 degrees for a couple of days. Mm, mm, mm. But doing well, doing well. Yeah, see, but that's that's humid too, right? I mean, you, you probably got some things out there. You know, it's 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 that uh, it's not dry heat, right? It's, <laughs> no, this is straight dry. It's not humid. It's dry. It's crispy dry. I love that he said it's crispy dry, brother Sadiq. Man, hey, hold hey. On, let's talk, first first of all, let's talk about that background. It's almost like you you've been there before. Like you you, you do this, huh? Man's got his own got that ah, show okay. going on. Talk to exactly, us. Exactly. I'm, I'm over here crime fighting uh, corruption and all that other craziness that goes on in our country. But thank you guys for having me on the show. Kubasaki, class of 88, the class. Oh, that was great. Dehi, don't that start was with great. that. Don't look, don't start with that. Where are my Kadena folks at? Don't start with that. <laughs> I, I think, uh, that's, uh, that's three of us, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's, that's uh, because, uh, well, Donovan is uh, class of 88, and me and Roz are 85, right? That's right. That's right. I just posted a senior heel picture on Facebook not too long ago. <laughs> well, let me see here. Donna, Donna let, let me get her back on. There we go. And I see we got one person that's trying to dial in still. So Donna Green, talk to us. Hi. Okay. I'm Donna. I don't know if you can uh, see me well because my picture looks frozen right now. Uh, and I keep getting knocked off for some reason. But I'm Donna Green and my mom is Norma Richardson. She told me about your invitation for her to speak and asked me to sit in. Oh, yeah. She well, let's out. see. She she bounced out there. You know. Uh, <laughs> hope, hope hope everything is all right. I know we got all kind of crazy weather here in, in this neighborhood, and 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 I know where they are. So hopefully it's not due to some of the fires and all that we got going on. So uh, hopefully uh, she can get that taken care of. Hold on, class of oh, class of eighty eight. Okay, well, let's see, let's see, she that's she old school there. I, I don't, I don't want to say what year I graduated, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, how you doing, Karen? Love you. 
Um, so what's going on there? No, so we got we got folks that have traveled the globe a little bit and and seen some things. T- talk to us about um, how and why. No, so why were you guys at Kubasaki? And tell folks where Kubasaki is for the folks that are that are watching trying to figure this out. So basically, Kubasaki is in Okinawa, Okinawa, Japan. Um, I went over there myself. Um, well, basically, I wanted to do a show about kids that were overseas and, they, and you know, living overseas, what some of the challenges were, what some of the good things were, you know, all, all that good stuff. So let's start with um, Kubasaki. Kubasaki is in Okinawa. If you don't know where that's at, it's in the Ryukyu Islands right off of... You off need to of, go back to school if you don't... Well, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Right below Japan. Right below Japan. So, um, you know, a lot of times Okinawans don't like to be called uh, Japanese, but right yeah. now they are being, um, I don't want to say overseen or oversought or... <laughs> or, or yeah. The language there is, is no longer Hogan. It's like Japanese. Like, y- yeah. you, you can rarely find folks that can speak Hogan. But um, I see I got some of my fellow Kubasaki uh, mates here. Um, how were how were some of your experiences uh, in in Okinawa? Let's just talk about Okinawa or, or overseas. You you probably been other places in Okinawa, but let's let's talk about it. How about you, Roz? Okay. Well, my dad was stationed in the military, and um, he got orders. We were living in Utah at Hill Air Force Base. Okay. And he got orders there. And at that time, I was pretty hot playing basketball. And I was about to go to a basketball camp and was told we were going overseas. <laughs> and it just broke my heart. I was like, I'm going in my senior year. Oh. I don't know none of these people. And so, um, but once we got over there and I got settled in, it took me a while to kind of um, get to know people. But once I did and I got settled in, I really enjoyed it. And I would not trade that for nothing in the world. It was the best experience I could have ever had. Yeah. You know what? You, I'd, I'll go ahead, Jane. I was say, I'd be remiss. We got we got a young man here that, that just joined on. Uh, oh, my goodness. And I, I put him on screen and then he disappears. Uh, <laughs> Donovan, let's go to you, brother. Yeah, uh, Yeah, a lot of that happens depending on what kind of operating system they work in. It won't let you click in. So it just depends. There's there's a lot of factors to it. We get that all the time on my show. Tech support, yeah. But real quick, uh, yeah, uh, real quick for me, um, my stepdad was in the Marine Corps Aviation Wing. And if you know anything about the Marine Corps, there's only three major aviation wings on active duty. And he was with the VMDR 152 there on Okinawa at uh, Fatima. And then if you don't go to that one, it was the old El Toro base. And then, of course, you had Cherry Point, North Carolina. So we were limited to three, basically, bases that we could ever go, go with. And my mom being in the Army Reserves, that was like an area that they that she can go to and still do her time and all that other stuff. Okay. Yeah. You know, be, uh, getting there in 1982, uh, you know, the Cold War was still going on. So we still had that old Vietnam type situation. Because if you've been to Okinawa recently, I was there two years ago. I try to go back every two years, by the way. I try to go back. And um, it's totally different than when, when we, we were there. Remember when the yen rate was like 300, 400 yen? You know, oh, that was good money then. Yeah, that was some good money then. <laughs> it's totally different now. And, uh, it's more of a resort area now that they're building up yeah. up there. So, 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 so for us and you know, for my family, once our tour was over in Okinawa, sure enough, we were right back up in El Toro, California. And that, that was pretty much a wrap for us. So. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. Let me try this again here. Mr. Hicks, talk to us now. You got, you, you got some audio. We, we, we see you. You got some audio. Tell, tell folks uh, your experience of, of living overseas. I know I know it's extensive, though. Uh, would you refer to this specific area or just a, a culmination of several areas? Tell me what oh, my goodness. See, now, now you get all you get granular. I'm, I'm just trying to say who, who are you? You know, where, where you've been? That, that kind of thing. OK. The elevator pitch, right? You know the elevator. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, I'll just make an introduction and leave it open for any questions because I have had an extensive uh, career. I mean, when you spend 26 years in the Air Force, you know, and travel over the world, so that's a lot of things, a lot of places you've been. Uh, as indicated, I am James Hicks Sr., and I have been formed. Uh, let's just start from my after my first basic form overseas would be. Uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, I've been to Japan, I've been to Europe, I've been to the Asia, uh, Pacific, I mean, where has it I have not been? I've been 
back there all over the world. Wait a minute. The only place I have not gone that I want to go is England, and I was too lazy to go across the channel. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I had to say uh, of all my travels in the Air Force, all my travels in places I live overseas, I would have to pick Germany as the place that I admired. My, my, my tour in Germany is the place I admired the most. And I guess being this because when I was stationed in Germany, I did a lot of TV wines in various countries, and I had a lot of exposure to different uh, countries and how they operate, countries and cultures, and and I was well pleased with that. I was well pleased with that. And and at this time, let me slow down for a second and let you present any question I may have. Could I get specific or I get uh, detailed? <laughs> oh my uh, goodness! Oh my, we're gonna, gonna uh, take gonna take us to school a little bit, right? I might, I ain't mad at that. I, I, okay. I, I, <laughs> But then, James uh, and everybody, one thing I want to share with everybody before we go to the next individual, one thing I did learn, and, and, and I appreciate my son, who he is, but when I was in Germany, um, we live off base in a town, in a community. It's, it's, it's pronounced Nara, N-A-U-R-T-H, I may be saying it incorrectly. And I used a lot of T-D-Y, a lot of T-D-Y. But one thing I found out is when you go to a place like that, you must remember that you are the guest and not the host. Where I've seen a lot of situations come up that, uh, that weren't too favorable is when we as guests come over and pretend to be the host, and that's <laughs> not right. Right. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, I mean I've seen it a couple of ways. Um, when I was in the military as well, as well as being a, um, a high school a high school student, um, you see people that just act out, and you know we can honestly say they're not being great ambassadors for the U.S. So you know, and the funny thing is not the not even the funny thing. Probably the bad thing is the sad thing is is that that's what they'll always remember is the is that bad. You know, you, you can't. You know, you go there and you're a bad ambassador. That's like now, oh, those bad Americans, you know, you, you hear that. And uh, e even in the military, you know, when I was in the military, you see, you know, folks that just kind of um, act out of character that, you, you know, um, and I'm not saying I'm perfect or, or anything like that, but, um, you know, because I, I probably acted out <laughs> as, as a kid. But, um, you know, you, you, you want to be a good ambassador. And I think, you know, um, you, I think you're right. You touched on that. And, and the funny thing, Roz had also mentioned that, you um, when you're when you live in the states and you're you're a kid, the first thing you hear is like, "Oh, we're going overseas." Yeah. It, it, it's like, "Oh my God, they're, you know, they're gonna you're not you're gonna come back and not speak English," <laughs> you know. But then <laughs> once you go once, I'm telling you, like Donovan, yeah. you want to go all the time. I've been everywhere. The military has taken me everywhere. When I went in the military, I got to travel to a lot of main places. Speaking of Germany, you hear all, all I knew about Germany was that um, it, I, my picture when I thought I was gonna go to Germany is gonna be like black and white it was gonna be like you know i went there some of the best food the beautiful yeah. countryside oh my goodness um so you know i think sometimes when you experience those things it makes you appreciate home but you also appreciate being over there too so yeah. um yeah. and um i don't if, if i can sp uh, speak on donovan because you know He's been there the most recent. I don't know who else has gone recently, but um, this guy, I lived through his videos when he, he just, he went to Vietnam. I said, how's this guy going to Vietnam? It's going to be crazy. Talk, talk to me about Vietnam and, and, and what your experience was there in Vietnam there, D. Well, uh, Mr. Hicks Sr., I can see <laughs> why you guys did not mind going to Vietnam. Number one, it's a very hold beautiful it, hold country. It. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. I don't mean no trouble, disrespect. What do you mean? Didn't have mine going. Hold on one second. Oops. Yeah, he he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't asked to go. <laughs> the whole. Look here, I got mine. I got mine. August twelfth of nineteen sixty-seven. October the first of nineteen sixty-seven. I was in Vietnam. I, I didn't have to go to Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, that you didn't, you didn't, been the best yeah, time you didn't open up a whole can now, Don. You didn't, you didn't oh, open up the wrong conversation, brother. <laughs> yeah. you know, well, well, here's the thing, though. See, and, and that's the same thing with my dad. Uh, you know, uh, my uh, real dad was a Marine as well, and he had to go over there. And then he went over there, you know, and a lot of our parents, they were all Vietnam-era guys, right, and, and ladies. Oh. So they're over there, they're doing their thing, and then, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Dad or mom comes back, and they don't want to talk about it. They just don't want to say nothing. You know, they got all the ribbons. They don't want to talk about it. So I figured, I said, you know what? 
I've never been to Vietnam. You know, we've been to the Philippines. We've been to Korea to get our tennis shoes. I'm, we're right there in Southeast Asia. <laughs> Let me go yeah, that, over to that, that fake polo. Yeah, you know, let, let, you know, let me go over to Vietnam and see what my dad was talking about, and see if I can visit some of those old spots that he was stationed. My dad was stationed in Play Coup. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So I get over there. Well, mm-hmm. before I go over there, I call my mom and I said, "Hey, mom, I'm getting ready to go go to Vietnam." She goes, "What are you going to Vietnam for?" <laughs> yeah. And I said, um, "I'm going to go look for some brothers and sisters. I might have some relatives over there, you know, some cousins." <laughs> Right, and so my mom, <laughs> my mom's laughing, and she goes, "Starting to go, you need to start in play coup. Start in play coup." So <laughs> I went back, and um, I didn't find any relatives. And I'm tell you, a beautiful country. Uh, the food, the people are, are you know so nice, and um, I would recommend anybody to go back there, especially for the ladies. Vietnam is the Paris of the East. So they had stuff over there that was just, just amazing. And before this pandemic hit, I was supposed to go back to the Philippines, mm-hmm. Old Clark Air Base, because I hadn't been there since the eruption. And, um, you know, I okay. love the yeah. Philippines, yeah. QB Point. I mean, just going back to our old haunts, because remember, Wagner High School doesn't exist Wagner. anymore. All these great things. And, you know, here just 30 something years later, and to be able to go back and see what it was, what it is now, is just, it's, to me, it's just an awesome thing. Like I said, I did the South Africa thing and that's what I wanted to do. I said, well, I'm just gonna travel and just go to these places and see what's, see what's up. Yeah. Hey, so hey, let, let me, let, yeah, go ahead. Hey, hey Donovan, uh, when you go back home, you ask your dad what he knows about the tennis since 1968. And you would definitely and you understand would- why you definitely understand why I ain't got no desire to go back to Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. Look, just remember I, the tennis <laughs> of 1968. Hey, 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 D, I don't, I don't take dad to no Vietnamese restaurants. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I, <laughs> we, we don't. We, we don't. We is ink snay on the on the Vietnam. But let me, let me, let me bring it back a little bit again. And Sister Richardson, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you back online with us. So appreciate you there. And, and, and I'll, and I'll start with you when, when it is. Because a handful of us come at it from a perspective of kids growing up, going to schools there. And I think Roz and, and Evie, you talked about it as well, right? The fact that we got so many stamps in our passport at such an early age. There's pros and cons to that, though, right? Because one one of the cons, I think, of growing up in a military family as a kid, and, and for me, I'm, and I'm open about this, is that you never really got to be close to anyone throughout that whole experience. It was Every year and a half, I'm going to I'm going from California to Germany to 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 Japan to Virginia, wherever the case may be. So you never really got that opportunity growing up to get close to folks. But I got to see all those places as I was growing up. And I know folks now I'm 50 years old. I know folks who still haven't left their corner of Sacramento, California. So they just think they know about the world when they haven't even seen the world. So, so that's a huge disservice, I think. Um, t- talk to us a little bit about kind of your guys' perspective on that uh, in terms of how, how challenging was that for, for you growing up in a military family and, again, having to be mobile so much? Uh, Roz, we'll start with you. Well, um, I, I totally get what you're saying, and that, that's something that I had to deal with as I was raising my own children. Um, just having to move, you know, every three, four years, yeah. not really being able to be stable and have those stable friends. And so um, was able to stay in one place and allow them to grow in one place and have the same friends from school. And that was a great experience to see. But I still wouldn't take away what I experienced being able to travel the country because I wouldn't have been able to do it any other way yeah. if yeah. my father wasn't stationed there. And so um, just being able to go there, I was able to learn uh, Japanese uh, being able to experience another uh, part of the country and uh, the beauty of God's creation, that was a blessing to me. I talk about it all the time and say, hey, I graduated from uh, Kubasaki High School. And then uh, while we were there, um, I, me and my sister came in the military on the buddy program. And my first assignment okay. was Han, Germany. So I went to Germany, you know, right nice. after that and just enjoyed just the beauty of oh the uh, the world from another yeah. perspective, the the family connection that you get from military, you can never trade that. Um, I could go anywhere and go into a BX somewhere and see somebody that I knew from 
35 years ago because that family connection never leaves you. And so I think that's a good thing that um, I learned as an individual uh, growing up and I was able to teach the same thing to my children, that we're going to be family no matter where we are uh, or who we are. So I I I appreciate the experience. I love that point, but but you, you did use some some inside lingo there, and I want to make sure that folks outside of our circle understand <laughs> what what the BX is. Tell tell tell, tell folks what the BX. <laughs> you know, no, everybody here knows what that is, but you know, the civilians uh, may not know. But race change. That's like the Walmart of the. There it is. There it is. That's the military mall. You gonna see everybody when you go in the BX? What up? Didn't I know? Wait, I know you from somewhere. I know I've seen you somewhere. You know, so oh. yeah, that's what the BX is. Sorry, I didn't mean to use that. Just Nope. Um, nope. No words. I'm gonna I'm use another one before I ask Miss Miss Richardson. So, 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 Dad, what's your favorite place? Not the BX. What, what's your spot? We, we know what your spot. Let me, I know. First, let me tell you, I have USA. a hard time staying connected. But okay. Anyway, my favorite place is the commissary. There it is, the commissary. That's, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is the grocery store. <laughs> That's your Ralph. Or your oh, she fell off. She off. fell off. Oh. She got, well, she on a sprint I think, phone? No, I think, <laughs> no. I think Roz made a good point too. Is <laughs> Roz made a good point because I'm telling you, not even just in the seeing within the military, but I've met people outside of the military. I, 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 I kid you not, I've traveled everywhere, Florida, you know, in the states, it, it, any everywhere I've gone. I, I'm not lying. Every place I've gone, somebody has come up to me. Are you Eric? Did you go to school in Kawasaki in Okinawa? I'm like, get out of here. And everywhere I've gone, so it's almost like. Ross is right. Your family has extended. And, you know, as far as being close to somebody and getting that closeness, um, I mean, you're really like that even if you stayed in one place because you have people that are close to you, friends, and then you have people that you meet and and acquaintances. I mean, I get the fact that you're talking about, you know, having roots and kind of being grounded, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. I I feel like I was able to raise my kids in a way that was more open um, you know, they're a little more, uh, they, they, I feel like they got a little more stability understanding because, you know, uh, two of my kids were born overseas and two of my kids were born in the States, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's like um, I'm able to g- share my experiences and, and be open, you know, not you know, open, but I mean by like open minded with people and, and mm-hmm. caring about other people and, and having an understanding because, bef- you know, pre going to overseas, you know, you're like, oh man, you're you know you're gonna come back. You're on, they're gonna make you speak Japanese. You're not like, it's not like that. It's not yeah. like that. So yeah. you know, it, it's 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 a it, to me, right? Like Ross says, it was a blessing. And 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 then having my extension of friends, no matter where I go, yeah, friends from the military, friends from school, I feel like it makes the world so much smaller. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so this is amazing. And you know, James, I mean, you went to Kadena. I mean. I've, we've gone to Sacramento. I'm in LA, yeah. so guess, guess where you can go? You you can come up to LA, and yeah. I can go to Sacramento, and you know yeah. we, we go all over the place. We we can you know we, we have a, a friendship. And Donovan is like right right in the in the back door. It's uh, San Bernardino. I love I'll it. Say, I'll, I'll say love back door because he's in. You know, it's like he, it's hard <laughs> to get in there, man. I, I was going. I, was, I said, man, he's like come visit me. I was like, man, there's only one way in this place, and I'm like, ain't no other trap. I could probably go there now because of COVID. But <laughs> I love it. I well, love can I say it. something in addition to what Eric was saying? Is yeah. even though um, you know we were at for me personally was at Kadena for a short period of time and I left, I didn't get to connect with people as much as I could when I was there. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God for social media because as a result of that, I've had to, you know reconnected with them. We can see each other. We can see how each other have grown and our children. And so that is true, a, truly a blessing. But just the fact of meeting people, yeah. uh, you stay connected, whether you get to see them all the time or not. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, good point. point. That's a good point. Good point. I will say, uh, I, I know I, I made a joke about Karen saying she was class of 88, but yeah, I, I'm just a little bit older than, than her as well. But you know, I, I, it's tough here being with all these Kubasaki folks because, you know, I was I was part of the Kadena team that stole y'all mascot. Kadena. Yeah, so it, we, oh, you know, we had, had, well, see, there you go. Uh, I was, that, I, we haven't really been saying much I mean, about Kubasaki. I mean, the fact that we was on the same island, that's, that's what matters. 
Yeah, you know, we're look, trying to be rivals up in here, but if you want to go there, yeah, we did. I, look, I, I showed this sneak on campus in the middle of the night with with a crew, and we and we took y'all mascot. I'm not gonna say it was a good thing, but that uh, <laughs> what the, the Panthers? What, what were you guys? Because Kadena was Panthers. Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, Dragon. we could. We, yeah, we couldn't roll with them. Yeah, but we had a lot of love for y'all. I mean, a lot of good people there. Um, yeah. Let me let let, let me let me do this, uh, Miss Rich, because uh, she continues to have some some internet connectivity issues. And let me ask. As Sister Norma, there your uh, experience with this, right? Um, military I family. I want to share this with you. Uh, we moved. My children moved three times. Went to three different schools in one school year, and it did not change their their education. They passed their grades and everything. They never missed a shot. Right. So that was good. They went. They started out in Amarillo, Texas. Then we went to New Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Pease Air Force Base, and we ended up in Aviano, Italy. And they right. never missed a beat right. in their grades. So you can move around, and it doesn't bother your children educationally. It's it's really good for them. But I enjoyed being overseas. Yeah. My daughter, oldest daughter, went to uh, boarding school. We were in Aviano, and she went two years to... Uh, High school in 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 uh, what is it Vicenza, Italy? I think okay, it's Vicenza, yeah. Italy. She went, which is on the side of uh, what is it? You know, I'm getting old and I can't remember. But anyway, look, I can't remember what I did this morning. Don't worry about it. It's all right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, so that's what I just want to tell you. Now, what were you going to ask me? No, that I appreciate. It. And again, you you actually answered. You know your experience you know where you kind of fit into this discussion right in terms of uh were you a military family as well i i know but again just just for everyone's background but but you share that and i I think you you made a good point that yeah i i may have said i had a complaint about it but i really didn't right because having that experience and then being able to be more of a i think being more of a well-rounded person by being able to go out there and seeing what it's like across the pond, across the ocean, or wherever the case may be, coming back home and then really appreciating what you have here, appreciating what's out there as well, right? And then mm-hmm. I, I almost w- will say this now, it's probably going to get me in trouble, but I, I think folks who have had experience in the military or military family actually are better off in life. Just because, again, they know how to deal with different personalities, they know how to deal with different types of circumstances. You know, when stuff starts to jump off, if you've got that discipline and that grounding of that type of uh, surrounding, you don't fly off the cuff, right? I mean, you, you 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 just have more of a balance and a foundation because that's how your family was already brought up, right? I mean, you know, my dad was in the military twenty plus years, twenty seven years, so he's got that foundation of 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 combat, of uh, of uh, service. Roz, you've got that as well, right? Of just being within the ranks and, and an understanding that, you know, there there's order, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So, so knowing those types of things in, in life and especially the nerdy part, man, keeps you on that straight and narrow for the most part. I, you know, I, I, I did some things, but I, I look, I, I didn't do anything crazy to get right, me right. or my dad kicked off the Island. Right. So, so, and, and y'all know about that, right? We, we can go, you know, go down to gate two I? street and act a fool if you want to, right. <laughs> but, but, but don't, don't do something that's going to get your sponsor kicked off the Island. Right. Absolutely. So we, there was always that that uh, that that uh, conscious activity when we, when you're going out there to George Washington's to, to, to party at the clubs out there in Okinawa that, that you knew better than the than, uh, than act too crazy. Uh, and James, if I can say something, I hate that Miss Norma was knocked off because I really yeah. think that she provided some wisdom. And one thing that is key from a parent's perspective, there she go, Miss Norma, I'm getting ready that, to give you your give you your. Prop. I'm give you your props, but she, what I she'll give you your flowers. Uh, yeah, what I want to say uh, from the perspective of Miss Norma is her being a parent. It's really key that a parent um, does their job in helping their children to process this as well. Because yeah. if a parent and a and a uh, are not stable in their marriage or in their uh, relationship, that's going to have effect on their children as well. And so, if the if the father is the military member and the mother is not. She has a, a key role of helping her children to understand, hey, dad is 
doing this. This is his purpose right now. This is his yeah. job right now. And then mom is going to help to maintain that home where when the children do need to move back and forth like that, she can help them to maintain their education. So I yeah. give the props to the parents, too, because they have a job as well to make sure that we can process this because we're children. We're good observers, poor interpreters. Like, you know, I was about to get a basketball scholarship. Like, what? I got to leave? But I don't understand. You know, yeah. so parents are key. Parents are exactly. key. Exactly. Well, let me jump in there real quick and just add on to that, because as a military brat, especially a Marine mm. Corps brat, we looked at two Air Force kids and said they got good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you were you were on so you were on Butler. Did you live on but? No, no. Well, actually, actually, I was on Kashaba, but before that, oh, okay. I was in Machinata. Oh, oh wow. Okay, down there, by, down there by the roller skating so ring. Down Machinata. there by the roller skating ring. All right, they moved this down and all that other stuff. And you will find a lot of former Marine Corps brats mm -hmm. join the Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't join the Marine Corps. Wow. Okay. Yeah, my dad was okay. a Marine, too. So, yeah, so know, I went the Air Force route. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know what I mean? So, you know, like, like what Ross says, we observe and we see what is going on and we say, hey, I could either, you know, do this and, you know, live on dirt and my family, you know, not that the Marine Corps is a bad thing, but their association with the family, I yeah. identified immediately the Air Force, if I had a family, would be better for me versus what the Marine Corps had to offer. So, very so, so that. Dad, talk a little bit about that, right? Because uh, I mean, you you were the one that had to do it, right? The TDYs, and, and and I still remember a couple of times in the middle of the night, you, you know, kissing me on the head and then rolling off and and being gone for weeks on end. So, oh yeah, talk a little bit about about those experiences. It's amazing you said that, but that came to my mind. I was talking. Uh, let me back up for a second here. I need to give a platform to. Uh, let's go back to Germany. You know, who was talking to Cadenas, and I was Bob and Goose. I was Cadenas. I was there. I was a member of the the odds, uh, uh, board of Christian, board, board of education, board, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> when we were get it right. When what we you talking about? Germany. When we were in Germany, uh, I did a lot of TYs. I I went all over all over Europe. One of the things that really put me at mind, at peace at mind, was that when I left, my family, James, my wife, they were very well taken care of. I did not have any qualms in about their ability of taking care because the people in the community surrounded them and we surrounded them. They took care of them. As a matter of fact, I think one time somebody gave us a rabbit. I mean, they gave us all kinds of things to let us know they appreciate us. And during that time, the comp level of confidence gave me, when I had time off, I would go down to, uh, I'm going to tell you, I was in that's what go down and drink the beer and the schnapps and have fun on the kids and so forth. <laughs> so I would go there and, and I'd get with the fellas. And as a matter of fact, they, uh, they liked me so much to the steel. And when they saw I could drink that right off the steel, I, I became a favorite person, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so one Saturday, a guy came to me and says, hey, we're going to rebuild this church. I don't know anything about rebuilding the church or whatever. That Saturday and the remaining Saturdays, I got out there with them, and they were just surprised at me, astonished that I got out there in mud and can help my policy and everything, and refurbish this, this whole church. So I guess about six months later, sometime later, I get this invitation. This invitation was to the uh, dedication of this church we, we rebuilt. Do you know if you were not part of the crew that actually did the work? Now, come on. now let me tell you what's really unique about that. I'm not breaking, but I got to tell you about this. What's unique about that? When I was at this presentation, they presented me with a, a value and a certificate, and it's called Swy Burgermeister. In mm. Germany, the burgermeister, burgermeister is the mayor. Swy burgermeister is number two bear. Oh, you know, it's a make believe something they created. And you know what that did for me? If my uh, friends came to visit us in the town which we were living in, and we decided to go over to the uh, gas house. Do you know why you were there with me? You did not pay for anything. Mm -hmm. Now, when we had to go shopping for Christmas or whatever, I knew. Germany, Germany. I knew how to say beer, snobs, and whatever. 
But Uh-oh. James Jr., having living with a family and he playing with the kids and so forth, he would actually speak German almost fluently. <laughs> I would always say, what is that? And how you do that? Hey, I, knew I, I, still, I still got them numbers down. You know, ein, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs. Look, no, no. I still know them numbers now. <laughs> that's that's crazy know, that you say that. Though, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, even though it appears that our favorite uh, gentleman, I, I, I had a good, I had some good time. I saw a lot of, saw a lot of you. But I, I really want to go back to something I heard James say a moment ago, and I think I've hit it all over again. Uh, had we not, I had not, had I, had I not had the chance to take my family to the various locations in the world through the military, we would probably be sitting here in Sacramento and hadn't gotten to uh, uh, mm. what's called the North, North Highlands yet. So all yeah. the time I spent in the military wasn't always better. But you know what? When I look at the big picture, and I think we are truly blessed, because that time in the military allowed James Jr. also to be faced with different challenges and situations and the manner in which he has handled those that I'm aware of, he's done extremely well. So I, I got to get a military a, a hit on that. I got to get a military yeah. hit on that. Because like you all said, now you don't want to be doing things that's going to have the sponsor and you all kicked off the island. So there yeah, was discipline there, you know. <laughs> it, and it's not someplace. But like I said, I yeah. go on and on and on. I need to pass that off because we did have a, a – oh, 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 oh. You talking about the BS and the commissary? My wife loves it. She loves it so much that she's got to work in the BX. And, yeah, she probably, I think, isn't she there right now? I think mom's at the BX right now. Oh, Lord. Yeah. No, but, but, you know, we have shoes right now that she's ever worn. That she oh, there the you go. See, you, you didn't put her out there on front. You know, still, 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 got the, still got the price tags on it. Hey, y'all, y'all remember China Pete? Look, y'all, 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 oh, 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 yeah. Yes, y'all. Like, oh, try to pee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'll, I'll see be quiet all. for a second. We, yeah. we can go, we can go on and on and on. Um, Maromi Street. Uh, where do we go? Where was our um, you know, a lot of proms were at um, oh my god, what's that? Uh, is it north of the island? Tor- oh, actually, towards Macamanado. What's that? What was that? Um, a lot of the proms, I think Kadena had their oh. Yeah, it was like Kona, the, the Noah, uh, Hilton, Kona, Kona Park, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, one of the one of the major places out there. And then you know we can always talk about all the clubs. <laughs> I mean, but think about it as as children, as as you know, not grown us because we were high school, we were kids. Um, it was safe. I mean, like like uh, uh, James Senior was saying, is that it, it was really safe for us because how many kids are out there? I I, I mean, for me, I, I know there was like. There was drugs out there, like the only drugs I knew of that were in Okinawa, like some of the, you know, kind of there's kids that got into kind of stuff they were smoking and stuff. But, um, you know, they got into like cough syrup and and yeah. uh, stuff like that. But I never heard of nobody taking cocaine. I never heard of nobody taking heroin. So we were safe. Mm-hmm. You know, we're kind of not being exposed to all that. I mean, because we were going to we were going to the clubs. We we're going to 8B, <laughs> New York, New York, Manhattan. And I, I'm not I hope James will get in trouble. But um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were out there, having, but we were safe. We were dancing. It, it was almost like it was like a teen center for us, even though there was a yeah. Katina's teen center. <laughs> but um, it, it, I, I didn't feel, you know, but, you know, then again, you know, kids never have that fear. You know, you know what I'm saying? They, were, they would always, I remember we would uh, dive off EK Bridge at night and, you know, never have a fear. Now I just walk the beach and thinking somebody's going to get attacked by a shark. <laughs> so, but um. <laughs> But, you know, community community is is huge. And I think, um, you know, being in the military, uh, even we had civilians because what was this? They had CKS and they had um, OCS was one of the, the Christian schools out there. And so there was like civil service folks who are still part of that community. So I think, um, you know, that, that was huge. It was huge. Did kids get in trouble? Yeah. But to the extent of what a lot of children were doing in the States, I think I, I felt like it was safe. I said, you know. It wasn't perfect, but it but it was safe. I I felt. Yeah. yeah well, adding to that real quick though, see, uh, whenever I try to explain to like local people where I'm at, uh, how that experience was, okay, I'm I'm the class of '88. You guys, class of '85, '86. I mean, you can have you know a class super higher than you, super lower than you, right? A lot of people don't realize military schools were actually private schools. I mean, they're you know that was mm-hmm. yeah. private yeah. education yeah. actually, and um, because of our or linkage, like I said, I, I haven't seen Roz in years, but you know, because our parents were military linked, 
you could be six years behind me and I would know you because of our parents linkage. And then when we get into the school, we all know each other from our school linkage, but we could be, you know, I I look at kids nowadays, they kind of hang in their cliques and they, you know, okay, I'm a senior, the seniors hang together. You might have a junior in there, whatever. But with us, say Kubasaki, or I remember when Kadena opened, when Kadena opened, half of our alumni went straight to the other side. Straight to the other side, right? Yeah, yeah. So now you've got your compadres over there, but, you know, Kubasaki going from 7th to 12th, you know, it wasn't unusual for somebody to be a, a senior knowing a, a seventh grader. And yeah. you just accepted them as family and you just keep moving on and, and, and you're doing, you know, what's good. But I, the one thing I really miss is, well, I don't miss it because, like I said, every state I know somebody. But you go back to the rivalries as, you know, again, I'm at Kubasaki. Here's this brand new high tech Air Force school. Yeah, we're like, all white too. Paint, painted, painted, and just all white too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> on and the hill, go, on the hill. Yeah, I would go to my parents and say, "Well, how come we have to live like this and the they get school. that?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know? that's true. But, you know, let me, but, but let me, let me, those dynamics were always in play because if your if your dad was a senior master sergeant or you know a, a major or whatever, it really didn't matter other yeah. than the group that you you kind of hung out with and you and you hang with. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. Let so me, we would have the general's daughter, General Peterson's daughter. Well, um, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, let me, let me ask this, and, and again, let me let me bring Miss Richardson in why, why she's got a uh, stable internet connection. Um, yeah, I don't. Go going back to some of these places, right? I mean, we we we've talked, and you know, Donovan has talked about he's gone to a number of places uh, as of late, and, and Roz has gone as well. But how, how is that? I mean, are are you? Are these the type of vacations that, that since you've gotten out of the military and not out of the service that you've taken your extended family to? You know, did, you, did you take your kids to Italy, right? Do you, do you, or do you take your kids to Walt Disney no, World we, and, uh, and, and, and Bush Gardens, that kind of thing? <laughs> you know? No. Well, when we came to California, uh, yeah, we've been to Disneyland and Santa Cruz and all of that. Yeah. But I want to share one thing with you. During my years overseas, I was in France and Spain and okay. Italy and Germany. But where I, when we were overseas of those seven or eight years, I always lived on the economy. I lived in the American commune. And because yes. I wanted my children to get to feel a Oh. Uh oh. I think we lost her again. We lost her. We lost. Her. That, that's unfortunate because 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 she's definitely got some some history that we, we we'd love to yeah, love it. Yeah. C- continue to have. So let, let me let me ask you guys this, right? So so Rosing, I mean, we can't travel right now, but <laughs> when when some of that opens back up in terms of uh, having the ability again, of, of, do you, do you go to so you're you're, you're in Texas? Do, do you just keep folks around there? Do you send folks to the West Coast or Florida, or do you actually say, you know what, let's let's go ahead and get on that plane, let's go check out, let's go check out Germany, Let, let's let's go see these places that I was stationed at or that I've had experiences with. I mean, what, what's your what's your thoughts about that? I know right now, even without COVID, well, part of COVID, they don't want no Americans coming in, in into their country right now anyway, and and. <laughs> And I'm and I'm setting this this statement up because there was those issues that happened on the island of Okinawa, where there were some military folks that uh, raped some some right. some locals there, and they were not look. If you looked American, sounded American, don't don't come on the island because you you, you might end up missing off the seawall, right? <laughs> but, um, so so what, what's your thoughts about that? You know, from, from when you start traveling again, are are you going to probably take take your family to to Okinawa or or what? Well, let me preference this first. I have five kids, and so <laughs> they stay they, home. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they can't all they can't all go space A no more, right? You know, it, it's no longer space A. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things about me is I never wanted the fact that I had five kids to limit me from anything, hmm. and so my kids have traveled to almost thirty states. Um, I love travel. I've always loved travel, so. Um, we'll get up and go in a minute and I'll load them. We load them all up, me and my husband. 
So they have been to several um, places in the United States because we're here in Texas and our family lives in South Carolina and Georgia and North Carolina. So we have driven across, um, I can tell you every state, every stop. Um, so ever since they've been little, they have traveled. And so that has been a blessing that I've been able to give them because I traveled. Um, we were right before COVID hit, oh, wow. we were on our way to Hawaii and um, had to cancel that. And then uh, we heard about the reunion of uh, Kubasaki. My daughter was like, mom, I want to go. You talk about it all the time. And so I just have the mindset of not allowing anything to limit me as far as travel of my children. And so they have experienced some things and, and I want to take them overseas as well. But, you know, I had to wait till they get a little bit older because, you know, five on a plane, which we've done it. You know, when they had their um, each one of them for their graduation gift, I asked them where they wanted to go. And so um, took them to uh, New York. You know, they've been to Mall of America, okay. went to Disney yeah. World. So I appreciate that yeah. fact that God allowed us to do that. We weren't rich, didn't have a lot of money, but I did not allow mm -hmm. anything to limit me. So I'm looking forward to them going overseas as well. That's good. That, 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 mm -hmm. And they, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure they appreciate that because, again, just getting out there and just being with the family and especially seeing different sites. They soak it in, yeah. But but again, they, they probably ate up everything, and then you're like, man, y'all 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 not contributing to the bottom line here, but y'all sure are. Y'all sure. I'm, I'll, I'll leave that alone. Donovan, talk to us about that. You you doing some traveling still in in, in your world? Um, what what's next on on your uh, agenda for for your itinerary? Well, well, for me, you know, um, been you know been a lot of places. My Air Force career, um, in in my stuff, other outside of my parents. And by the way. Uh, Mr. Hicks Sr., thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, your service and putting us as brats in a position to have a bigger perspective of the world other than the United States, mm -hmm. our neighborhoods and all that other stuff. Because without you guys at the time serving, when you served, we would have never, a lot of us wouldn't have this opportunity. So because of that, I figured, hey, you guys were old school and, um, you know, I can't stay here. I got to do something, right? Say, hey, right. how bad could the military be? I've lived this whole yeah. life. Let me go do, you know, do, do some time. Right. It opened up a lot of doors for me. So in, in my career, 24 years serving in the Air Force, been to a lot of places and loved it. But for me specifically, um, haven't done a lot of traveling in Africa. And as a black person, um, you know, I need to go there. I mean, I've been all yeah. over Europe. I've been all yeah. over Asia and I love Asia. Don't get me wrong. I love Asia. That's my mm -hmm. go-to spot. But uh, lately, uh, my next adventures, I just got back from South Africa last year, this time last year. We're going to hit Ghana. We're going to hit uh, Zimbabwe. We're going to go to Uganda. Okay. We're going to just hit the African thing so that I, you know, yeah. I can say, hey, you know, I've hit all the continents and learn a little bit about some African culture. Like I said, I'm, you know, you know, all the cultures are great. Like I said, I can tell you all about the Asian culture. Love it. But, you know, I got to kind of learn a little bit about my own culture as well. So that's where that's it's going to be. That's true. I'm, I'm actually supposed to, me and my wife are actually supposed to start off in Morocco in November, but there's this, this pandemic thing that's happening. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure you heard about yeah. it, but there, there, there's some things going on around the world right now. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get to make that trip. But yeah, you, hey, look, everybody's got to go yes. home, wherever that is. Yes, sir. I got a question for Donovan because I hear him. He spent 20 some odd years in the Air Force. Have you considered space aid travel? Uh, no, because unlike space aid, when back in our day and your day, uh -huh. They leave. They leave passengers. They don't want to deal with this retirees. <laughs> there aren't that yeah. many bases open like they used to be. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying there's not a lot of bases because I was air crew and I, you know, and I, I did a lot of flying. But um, it just isn't uh, advantageous to the bases anymore because the bases have restricted and you really don't have a lot of spots. So I want to get there and then get back. I mean. Um, I was telling Eric a couple years ago when I went to Okinawa that one time. I mean, I, I got a ticket for 500 bucks round trip. Hmm. 500 bucks. Oh, wow. Out of mm -hmm. LAX. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now. Yeah, so. Okay. I, I do understand what you're saying because those space aid travel, you need to be in a rush and you need to be patient. Uh, one of the things I learned, I do a lot of space aid travel through the United States. Uh, I had a few miles that kept coming back from Maryland to California. I talked to I said, man, you be spending a lot of money on airline tickets, you know? And he says, no, I try Space 8. And I found out 
to fly, they say, is a comfortable thing for me because I sit in my mind, I'm in a rush to get there, I'm not in a rush to get back. And now, before I leave you all with this story, if we didn't have this pandemic, I had my wife, she gets from me right now about this. And I told her, I'm going to get on an airplane and just fly. Where we go. <laughs> she told me, you can go by yourself. I said, I said, no. <laughs> so so hold on now you, you're using some uh in, inside code words as well uh space a go ahead go ahead and define yes. space a for the for the civilian folk space available uh, uh, and what kind of seat you sitting in what kind of plane yeah you you you, you, you can't just leave some of these 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 bits out right because uh, everyone else thinks that you just jumping on like a United 737, no? I think it's no. an available. I think whatever is available, whatever they have space for. Because I've gone on, I've, when I've taken Space A in the past, it, it, either a C5-141, but I've been on a 130 in those little <laughs> cargo <laughs> net seats. There you go. Yeah, don't, don't leave that out, right? You want you in a cargo plane in a jump seat with, with a box lunch. A little yeah. bit different than, okay. than United and Delta. You know, a little bit but, different. But hey, but what's that, what's that saying? Ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's the inside joke. That's the inside joke. Yeah, once it gets to altitude and, it, and it's leveling out, flying, you can get out of that jump seat, go get in, get on top of that pallet, spread out. <laughs> you're spread good. Out. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and maybe the maybe the crew can. Yeah, it depends on what's in that pallet. You know, you know, <laughs> you don't know what's in that pallet. So me, I was like, man, is this plane going to fall? Cause I mean, I, I worked on the one. I worked on one thirty when I was in Air Force, and I, I love that plane. I mean, that plane is a workhorse. I ain't lying. Yes, indeed. But it's loud. Yes, indeed. It is loud, and it is. Uh, it's not comfortable. <laughs> My husband is yeah. listening to you, Eric, and he's in the background saying, "Amen." <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he that knows. Workhorse. Yeah, he I knows. Remember, I remember yeah. doing maintenance like this. <laughs> I couldn't see what I was even working on, <laughs> but uh, but I but that, that plane, I love it. It, it. it that you man, there is nothing like that one thirty. Yeah. You can land on a dime. I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. so l let me ask you the question, though, EB, as well too, because I, you know, everyone else asked. So in terms of when, when the world opens up again, what's what's your thoughts on on travel? Are are you? I'm traveling now. I don't, ain't no COVID <laughs> out there. No, no. no uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, for me, I think what we're we're trying to do, we're trying to get some cruises together. I know we were trying to get the family together and do some cruises. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we're trying to do this Alaskan cruise because we've been hitting. You know, we we're doing this. You know, Pacific cruise. I, I want to start going on some cruises on the other on the other side. You know, trying to get to uh, some of the islands uh, and um, that on that side, Puerto Rico down there. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I really want to get back to when you guys went on that Paris trip. I got to talk to Tall ta Boy yeah. and say, Hey, what's that balling in a dime? How'd you get to Paris again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to, you know, uh, like I said, for me to get my travel stuff, I was going to Donovan's site and saying, Man, look at this guy all over the place. <laughs> I was like, man, but uh, yeah, Vietnam wouldn't have been my choice. But what I saw you, you, you were actually in a nice hotel. Um, and I guess I was going to make that another point. A lot of times in our minds, we got this vision of what we think it's going to be like. I, I remember like going overseas. I remember when I in third grade, I, I was in Indianapolis. We were going to school and we had that was we had to, we had to learn German. They actually had a class on teaching German because er, everyone was okay. scared there was going to be a German attack or, or whatever it was. I, yeah. I don't remember that. But like, you know, like something in my mind, I had this picture of Germany in my mind that was like, oh, my God, I don't want to go there. It's going to be horrible. And it was the most beautiful place. The mo I'm, I'm probably the best. I don't drink alcohol now, but man, the alcohol was good. The uh, the food was amazing. Oh my yeah. gosh! Um, but uh, yeah, it's. I love it. I guess I love stepping it. out of that comfort zone is the best thing that ever. Yeah, I, I do it all the time now. It's not even a, it's not even a thing. It's like if if I'm uncomfortable, I'm still going to do it. You know. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, you know, and people got to realize the cost of doing going to these trips now. It's really not a lot. I mean, it's you know, yeah. if you really want to go. You can go. It's doable. When I got to Vietnam, eating, there's food, food everywhere. It's like being in the Philippines. You can just go pick, yeah. pick it off the tree. You know, it's just everywhere. So, yeah. wow. It's doable. That, that's true. And I, and I think once the world opens back up, uh, tourism that's still available will open up and be more um, accessible to folks, right? Hey, we need you to come back to, to, to Costa Rica. We need you to come back to, to Guam and the Philippines because we, we've missed mm -hmm. that because that's that, that's that huge revenue aspect. 
uh, of where a lot of those places are. I'm, I'm loving the backgrounds, though, Don. I mean, yeah, you, a- you got my you got my Panthers right there right now. <laughs> I, w- I wish I had a yearbook. I should have pulled out a yearbook or something to, <laughs> to, to, to reminisce a little bit of, of, about that type of stuff. No, no, you don't want to do that because I had my Jerry Curl back then. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us did. <laughs> We can we can definitely yeah we can we can definitely go back that back when I had the the, the Playboy the fake Playboy suit that we got from Korea <laughs> yeah you know oh, so fl- flying fly, fly. oh my god remember, we remember we, only we jackets <laughs> don't, we don't we don't have time for that because the Lord don't, don't trying to forget that type of stuff trying to forget that um, yeah it's yeah, it's 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 a treat seeing you guys on here um you know just being overseas I, I was hoping like you know maybe Cliff and some other people because these are people that I actually was in the st- in North Carolina with. Went from North Carolina and then went to Okinawa. They actually followed. So Cliff ended up from North Carolina, from uh, Lejeune, ended up in Okinawa. So I've, there's people that I've known, like, back, David Brown, Raj, you know, David, and, um, you know, these guys. And um, uh, it, it, was just, it was just amazing to see them, you know. And then, like I said, the, it makes it a small world, you know, just growing up. Yeah. Mil- the military makes it a small world. And I, I, yeah. I, I really appreciate what the military does all the way around as a community yeah. Uh, the service that they do, um, yeah, it's, it's it's been a treat. And I mean, you guys look amazing. I'm telling you right now, we're we're I, I know we're in our fifties. Donovan, you might be young, but man, black oh, don't guys, crack. Man, there it is. Watch out now. Yeah, what? Tra- what? You know, there it is. Look, looking looking good. <laughs> you guys Just look amazing. Right. Amazing. Amazing. Trying to trying to trying to live 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 clean live live good life. Look, Mr. I, James it, look good. Look at him up there. Nicole. Well, let, let's zoom good. let's let's zoom in on him. Let, let's zoom in on him. I see you, boy. <laughs> we we see we see you, sir. I need you to more that you all are probably not aware, but you're gonna eventually learn this, and that is the attitude veterans have toward each other. A uh, good case in point: when I fly space, I don't know those people on that airplane. But all of a sudden, we have become one big family, you know, and it's really amazing that people from all over the world, and they have this thing in common, that they are veterans. So I yeah. think it's a truly a blessing for any and every one of you who have been connected with the military in some form or fashion. Probably during the time you were there, it was a little different. But if you sit back and you process what you played and what you endured and where your mindset is right now, it wasn't really bad. Look at my son, though. I, I would just drop the we dropped the mic right there. No, I, I'm gonna say, but 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 see, you know, I'm I'm that my mind never stops because we've all given the props forever to folks that have served in the military. We we know the challenge and we know how hard that is. We know the struggle. We we know the commitment. The majority of this country hasn't shown that approval or that that respect until when and i and i know the answer but I, i'm gonna I'm ask you guys when did the when did the united states of america really start showing respect for the military oh, it was 9 11 right. it was 9 11 was it really that was when you think about it up uh, so dad's era vietnam uh korea uh the, all, all the, the conflicts, no one really took the time to understand and respect the military. They, they thought it was a necessary evil or you know a necessary necessary thing that had to happen. But folks didn't really start recognizing, oh, we, we need this military until they came over and started attacking us at on homeland. Oh, that's when you started. Yeah. That's when folks started saying thank you for your service. Folks yeah, outside yeah. of the outside of the military community, right? Everyone mm-hmm. in, in the military mm-hmm. will always go give you, give you the dap, give you a shake, and say, you know, thank you, brother, for doing what you did. Thank you, sister, because you did what you did. But not until that time did folks start respecting and really appreciating folks in the military. So we've been doing it for a long time, but it's unfortunate it took that type of an activity for the rest of the country to catch up. Uh, but so, so I mean, that that's kind of something that I start thinking about when, when when folks say that, right? Again, because we we know this, and this this is second nature to us. But it, it's unfortunate again that it took such a dramatic instant to happen before the rest of the society and the rest of the country started saying thank you to our military veterans. Now start taking care of them, right? Getting a little more VA benefits, mm-hmm. and because that's a whole another conversation, right? Y'all having a hard time 
getting your just due. You, 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 uh, not just your money, but your, your medical, your, your financial aid for your, for your kids and, and all that stuff. Those types of things should be just right there in front of you as opposed to you going through all the red tape to, to find the resources. So I know, I know my dad is, is really keen on, on helping his buddies and, and the folks that he works with on that. We, we may have that conversation coming up soon as well. And, and, and Roz Donovan may, may invite you on to that because uh, you're, in the, you're in that conversation as well, right? You, you know that. And, and, Absolutely. You know. I mean, that, that really is key. That's the problem. Yeah. The, the information isn't getting yeah. out there. But I definitely am telling people because I got my knife. <laughs> I'm trying to go for that right. hunt. See? Right. Yeah. And why is it so hard for you to get that? Right. I mean, I mean, right. when, when, when you should just be able to call up the VA and say, look, I did this. I served this. I suffered from this X, Y and Z. Because well, selling it to take, you is not hard because selling it to you is not hard. Right. And then well, when it's when it's time to pay, that's like anything. But, you know, it's like anything, you know, it's like, OK, now we got to deal with the red tape of, of getting this. You know, it, it's a uh, it's a. Uh, you know, why? I mean, why? Why does tragedy? Why is tragedy the only thing that can bring us together? <laughs> you know yeah. yeah. So, uh, and it's in almost any case, you, if you think about it. Um, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. It's yeah. I don't have. Well, we don't have all the answers. We probably won't yeah. get all the answers here. But you know, it maybe if we just keep having conversations, yeah. uh, you know, people will start listening. Who, who yeah. knows? I tell you what. Let, let's let's close on this because this is an interesting question that 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 uh, Tallboy asks and. I don't know. This this is an interesting question. I've, I've never thought about this, but you know, it's it's a different time. Twenty twenty is crazy, and 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 you got your boy over there in in on the East Coast, in in uh, on, on Pennsylvania Avenue, who's given. Well, we we can have a conversation about that too. Uh, <laughs> any of you guys see yourself dual citizenship, maybe, or or you know, going 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 north, uh, going somewhere else. You know what? For me, as, as this conspiracy kept going, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I said, hey, I'm going to buy some property. I was born in the Philippines. <laughs> so I got a lot, of my, a lot of my family's in the Philippines. So yeah. um, I, I know, I'm, hey, I was calling my aunt because she's a realtor over there. I was like, you know what kind of, can I buy property over there? <laughs> you know, I mean, I thought about it, you know, because, I mean, think about what, how, how we're going, you know. And, um, but, but then again, that, to me, I feel like it's copping out. You know what I mean? We have to, I mean, I do want to do stuff in the Philippines and, 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 and have a little getaway there maybe. But you, I also want to make sure things get straightened out here because when I yeah. any time, any place I if I, if I called any place home it's here, here has always been home. Yeah. So we need to clean house, and I think it's a, we're starting to. Mm. I think things are starting to happen. I think things are starting to become the light. All the police shootings. Oh, by, by the way, it was, it was sad to hear about. Um, uh, God, Chad. Chad, um, Chad with Bozeman. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, you know, absolutely. shout out yeah. to him yeah. uh, because, yeah. you know, he he was, you know, he was a uh, uh, Black Panther. Yeah. Kadena High School. He, he uh, was Pastor, our I mean, king, man. That yeah. Was, yeah, exactly. When we were looking at comic books and when we were young, you know, we were looking for heroes. And I, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not saying, uh, you know, black folks are looking. Every minority is like, has their own hero. I didn't even yeah. know that. Did you know there's a yeah. Filipino uh, superhero? There's a, there, you know, just about every. Yeah culture has a superhero so they're looking yeah. that's called hope looking and wanting to keep that hope so do have i thought about it yeah i thought about it but yeah. honestly if we can keep hope alive and, and and make this country better like it was supposed to be then i you know i think that's uh i think that I, i'd rather stay here and fix it you know but in case i have a have an escape plan <laughs> yeah yeah no great point <laughs> okay. from you and and really really good thought here from milton so i um, thank you for for providing that Roz, let, let me let me ask you and then then we'll go go up and around but your thoughts on on the question that the tall boy has are you ever considered packing up i have not resource? i have not ever considered yeah. uh this this is my roots. This is my home. Mm. Um, even as when I was stationed overseas and when I was over there, I loved the time, but I missed home. I, I yeah. missed being uh, able to get to my family quick. I mean, you know, uh, if I drive, I got to go 19, 20 hours, but still, <laughs> I'm not going over some water. Um, yeah. But um, I, I love travel of country. I love the language of country. I know I, I love all of that, but I love where I am here. And actually my job right now, I work for the Social Security Administration. So I see a lot of refugees okay. here. I see mm -hmm. a lot of individuals who are coming from other countries and the challenges that they have to go through to try to even just get a job or get citizenship, get a Social Security card. And yeah. ha just thinking about having to deal with that challenge if I was in another country and then not knowing the language, the barriers 
um, it, that, that's, that's a lot to take in and then yeah. not having that support. Like we have a lot of support systems here that are helping with refugees and, and those that are coming in uh, through the social services, you know, where I work, but do they have that in other countries? Will they have the same type mm -hmm. of care for me yeah. if I go over there? So right, right. Um, mm -hmm. I hadn't considered it. No, but I mean, it's not an out, but it's not something I've considered. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. D. Well, like I said, uh, you know, and like I said, thank you guys for having me on, on the show today. Uh, but no matter how bad it gets here, this is still the greatest country going. I'm, I mean, I just I just have to put that out there. I mean, we got a lot of problems here. We know this, but we are one of the few countries that has such a diverse population. But have I thought about going overseas? With all my <laughs> military buddies <laughs> living in all those different spots, living in bars. One of the best kept secrets of the military was in Panama. When I went to the Panama for wow. the first time, I was like, oh my God, there wasn't an ugly woman in this country. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you, you go. Right yeah. 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 He'll take it to the next level. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, my, my kids are grown for me, so there's really nothing holding me here. But at the same time, this is home for me. But sure, I, I, I'd love to go out there for, you know, six months or, you know, yeah. a three month visa and just hang out and then come back and, you know, just kind of do my thing. But this is the greatest country going. We've got problems. And guess what? Eventually those problems are going to be solved. So, Amen. Amen. I, I like that point. Ms. Richardson, why, why, why we got you in it? So the, the, the question that I was uh, bringing up, folks, I don't know if you if you heard was just, oh, oh okay. and it was, <laughs> what? I'll pivot and go on going over there to. Brother Hicks there. You but you you don't mind traveling. But you you're not you're not the long term traveling. You, you do like to come back home. But I, I I won't put I won't put answers in your mouth. What about what Well, I'm gonna be straight and honest with you, just like the wife I had. Fifty three years ain't changing. I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> you gonna stay right there in your chair and uh, <laughs> right there, right there. Uh, I've seen uh, a bit to compare situations here and there. And there. And I think the best thing for me to do is, is, is live every day to the fullest and just stay right where I am. Thank you. I love that. I love that. And that, that's, a, that's a great way to wrap. The, you know, so before I wrap, and we and, and appreciate you for the idea, right, of having this conversation of bringing folks, because this is actually good for the soul. And this, this, is, this is a great conversation. That, and the fact that we locked down, can't physically go to each other and give each other hugs and all. We, we can reach out across the globe and, and, and have this type of conversation. We need to do this more. So, Roz and Donovan, we, you will be back on this show for sure. EB, hook it up, all right? Um, Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate definitely, it. This has been Definitely, good. definitely. And and that's the idea, right? Just just having this dialogue, having this, this, this collaboration, just having these conversations with folks that we care about, hopefully the audience... Find some joy, find a laugh, learn something. You know, maybe, maybe uh, in a couple of weeks, EB, we'll talk about the uh, the Burks Insurance Group because uh, yeah. I'm I'm throwing plugs. Look, look, I should be on retainer for your organization because <laughs> I'm throwing plugs for you. But uh, this is what we do, right? And and I yeah. think I, I think honestly, people need to do more of this. And and this is how how I close. I, I think folks need to do more of this of having dialogue with folks that they care about. And the world is missing this right now. And irregardless of what the conversation is, irregardless of what the topic is, just stay close. Take care of everything within your sphere of, uh, uh, your sphere of influence. Take care of friends, family, and, and also take care of yourself from a health perspective. So, uh, EB, that's me. Man, you got anything you want to close out with, brother? I do want to close out. Uh, Donovan actually has a show, and I like watching his his, his forum. He taught, he speaks with a lot of the uh, the. Uh, the the not lobbyists, but your your local uh, uh, Official, officials yeah. and uh, plug your show, Donovan. Let them know where you, where you at and where they can find you. So it's oh, a yeah. great show. Yeah, check it out. You can you can find us on Facebook Monday through Friday. We're we're known as the War Zone. The War and Zone. Right here on Facebook Live. Just go to my page. Look me up, Donovan Sadiq. I usually share it. And you know we're uh, dealing with a, you know, trying to tell people there's a different way. You don't always have to be a Democrat or Republican. You have options. You have options out there. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, does Trump need to go? Yes, I believe he does. But if he doesn't go, then what? If Biden gets in, then what? Yeah. <laughs> that's the question. Okay. That's all I said. I might. Well, you know, I, I, I try to 
everybody knows where I stand, but, but uh, you know, I, I try not to even, I don't even mention the man's name that, like I said, is sitting in 1600 right now because <laughs> I, I, I just, I just can't do it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna check you out. What's it called? The War Zone. The War Zone. Check it out. That's a, that's a, that's a good name too, man. Okay. <laughs> I, I bet you. I bet you get that. Oh man, I, I wish Sister Richardson was able to connect again. But but Dad, definitely tell her thank you for uh, jumping on and and attending. Hopefully we can uh, get 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 her uh, some some more internet connectivity in the future to where we can have some more dialogue, folks. It's James, it. Scoop, Scoop, and EB. We out. This is unscripted, y'all. Thank you. To, be good to yourselves. Have a good one. Thank you.